man who rubbed ham on Quran at mosque gets no jail time. So this is a pretty weird story. And I think we're going to have a lot to say about it. On October 30th, 2020, in Wichita, Kansas, a man entered the Masjid on Nur Islamic Mosque. He hung cartoon posters depicting Muhammad and rubbed ham on them as well as the Quran. Um, his last name is Archin Byrne, was alleged to have carried a gun with him inside the mosque, as reported by the Wichita Eagle. However, he told the police that he leaves his gun in his vehicle and only takes it out when he feels threatened. Initially charged with an aggravated assault, Artin Byrne pleaded guilty on May 25th to two misdemeanor counts of disorderly conduct ahead of a bench trial that was scheduled for June 9th. Sedwick County District Court records revealed that he was given a plea deal and then immediately sentenced to 90 days probation with a presumptive probation offense carrying an underlying jail term of 90 days. He will only serve the jail term if he violates the terms and conditions of his probation contract. Um, so okay. yeah. I wanted to cover this because I thought that this would give us an interesting example of talking about the difference between like free speech and like hateful conduct because this was considered a form of a hate crime um and I, yes it's also just like very bizarre behavior yeah, okay i i just want to say like for pe i hope people understand i for all people who support me and follow me okay i hope nobody's surprised that i would support the fact that this person committed a crime right and i'm against this person and i hope people understand why it's not the ham on the Quran part that is the issue. <laughs> is the inside at, at the mosque part that is the issue. Like it's you going out and actively put it, doing something, exposing people to something that makes them uncomfortable without them having a way out. The fact that you're forcing this behavior on, per, on people that you know they don't want to see. Like guys, for example, let's say like me or Susanna, we bring the Quran, we spit on it, we tear it apart. Um, that is, I think, activism on for free speech, right? You know why that's different? Because nobody that doesn't like that has to see that. Nobody that doesn't like watching me or Susanna tearing up the Quran has to come watch our videos. If they're seeing it, it's because they clicked on the video that is clearly marked that we're going to be ripping the Quran. They could block us. They could unfollow us. They could just not come to our pages, right? The reason why we do it on our platform is because we are trying to make the point that if you don't like something, you don't have to see it, but you don't get to tell us not to do it. That's why we make a video where we're ripping up the Quran. Because we're trying to make a point that you should not be able to stop us from doing this. And we should not be able to force you to see it. And in fact, not only if I rip the Quran and spit on it and rip the Quran, if somebody comes and bothers you with ripping the Quran in your face, knowing you don't want to see it, I will come in your defense against that part against that person. Okay? This person, this is criminal, this is criminal behavior this is harassment right this is absolute harassment you know that these people this is not welcome and you're going to a place where they can't um butt out they can't like not see you you're you're in their private you went to a private property with the intention of harassing people that are not interested in seeing what you are what you're showing them this is absolute harassment this person this person is a criminal this is you know go on Sus. Sue's is frozen. Is it just me that is frozen or Sue's frozen? Guys, am I frozen or is Sue's frozen? Do you guys see me? Let me know in the live chat. Anyways, while, while we wait for uh, Sue's, I'm going to read this tweet and comment on it. Oh, yeah, it was Sue's that was got disconnected. Okay. So Hindi Mackie is saying, I wish Islamophobes would just uh, eat the ham. 
um, they buy instead of wasting it. It's not like garlic to vampires to us. We just don't eat pork, uh, though you're welcome to. Okay, we, we just don't eat pork. You're welcome to. Okay, so she, okay, so here's an interesting thing, okay? A lot of these Muslims do not know how to call out what's wrong with the situation, okay? They're missing the point. Again, like, look, she's like, oh, my God, you guys, you, you're wasting your time by wasting pork and the Quran. It doesn't bother us. I mean, you're reacting to it, so it's getting, I mean, you are reacting to it, so don't act like this is like nothing. But the thing that you should be calling out, like, look at, you look at the priorities, okay? Look at the priorities. The things that you should be calling out as, as wrong with this person's actions has nothing to, should not be anything relevant to the ham on the Quran part. It's the at mosque part that you should be calling out. You should be calling out this person's harassment of Muslims in a place where he's not welcome. That's the part that you should be highlighting, the at mosque part. Susanna, you had your hand up before you were disconnected. Oh, I just wanted to talk about how, like, emphasizing the points that you are making, where this is an obvious, explicitly anti-Muslim thing to do. This is not against Islam because it's going to a place where you know there will be Muslims and doing something that you know that targeting them with something that you know that they will find shocking, upsetting, disgusting, offensive, etc. Like you're going to their place to go do that explicitly what you believe is going to bother them like the most. Um, whereas when we do things or involve in like more provocative forms of activism, like desecration, like we're doing that on our own platform and our own space. And we've been really good lately about saying what we're going to do before we do it specifically to give people the time to opt out of it instead of being forced to see it. Yes, exactly. Like Which we is now... the least harmful way to go about doing something. Yes, as that I used activism. I used to assume that if the video is titled, we're going to be ripping the Quran, that's enough for somebody not to click on it if they don't want to see it. But now we have gone beyond that. If we are about to do something that, because we do have Muslims who follow our channel. So now we have gone beyond that and give people actual trigger warnings if we are about to do something blasphemous. Um, and again, when we are, when we like rip the Quran or do something blasphemous with anything holy, um, it's with the intention. So, if somebody was like hurt by these actions, right? And but there, but there was no push for normalizing or making passing to laws or passing into community uh, guidelines, the uh, normalizing um, the pressure on stopping content creators from making such content. There would be no point for us to fight back against that by doing or saying the things that are being limited, right? So a lot of people think like we're sadistic. We're like, we're making these content to hurt religious people's feelings, right? That is not the entire point because if religious people's feelings were being hurt, but there was no demand of silence or no push to force silence on us, in that case, if we make content that would hurt people's uh, religious people's feelings, in that case, we're just being sadistic. Like we're just getting joy out of pe getting seeing seeing people butt hurt, right? That would, in that case, you could call us out for just hurting people's feelings, right? But if the hurt feeling is followed up by a demand and a push for forcing of silence, then you have to understand that this is this is beyond your feelings. This is us trying to fight against the normalization of silencing people, all right? That's the actual push here. But even when we do that, we still fight, we will still demand that you, that this, that nobody pushes things that you want to be, you don't want to be seen on you. We're just trying to pass on the responsibility of you not being offended to you. Again, I'm even against atheists who say that you shouldn't be offended. No, we don't get to decide what you're offended by. Like people are like, oh, I'm offended and atheists make fun of you. Like, well, you shouldn't be offended. No, you can be offended. It's fine to be offended. I get offended by many things. I get offended by people like not caring about, I don't know, like violations of human rights in Yemen. Like when people like, or in China, like when we have atheists who support China's actions on Muslims, I get offended. Everybody gets offended, okay? 
It's fine to get offended. You can be offended, okay? But what we try to show is that if you are offended, your responsibility, you are responsible for not saying the things you don't want to see. It's not the responsibility of the content creator not to create the content that you don't want to see. It's your responsibility to just not go chasing after the things that makes you brings you discomfort. Rivka, you have your hand up. Yeah, I wanted to just um, talk specifically how this relates to the title. So it says, man who rubbed ham on Quran at mosque gets jail time. And Susanna said that, you know, it is being talked about as if it's uh, specifically a uh, hate crime. But I don't see that he's been charged with federal hate any federal hate crime and he was charged with aggravated assault because he yelled negative and scary things at a person in the mosque and oh, then wow. just disorderly conduct yeah when yeah people assault is a threat under the law battery is when you actually do something you know so he said something nasty did a bunch of other things the and I, and I think this is important to make clear because some people might assume, like I did when I first read the article, that he damaged their property. No, he brought his own Quran. So this was premeditated. He stopped and bought a Quran. He showed up with some Charlie Hebdo magazines. He, you know, yelled at this guy. So he did these things. Um, but he hasn't been charged with the federal uh, hate crime. He was charged with this. But I just want to say, because the art, the headline says no jail time. If this person has no criminal record, and this is his first time any of this has ever happened, and the yeah. way the law works, I don't know if he does or not, about the plea bargain, well, the that's the way it yeah. works. Oh, you know, okay, okay. that's very common that they plea bargain massive percentages of crimes down. And it may be the case that this guy, this is the first time any of this is happening, which would be a normal situation. Some guy does something that might merit 90 days in jail, but nobody wants to go to trial, including the prosecutor and... <laughs> the defense attorney and the judge, they have bigger fish to fry or that's just the way it works. So they would m may offer him something like this. The reason I'm bringing this up is I don't want there to be an assumption that just because he got a plea bargain, it's because people are all Islamophobes or they agree with this guy or because of course he did, you know, he's a white man who's, you know, I don't want that to be the natural assumption because it very well may be that this A, may not have merited jail time, or maybe it did because he got 90 days if he violates his probation or right. the plea bargain. So I just want people to understand how that works based on the title because it almost implies, well, how come he didn't go to jail? Like there's some discriminatory aspect against muslims there i just wanted to bring that up right yeah actually it's very good that rifka mentioned that because i was um i was actually going to say with regards to him not getting any jail i don't know i i didn't know how to comment on that because i don't know like it's so interesting that a lot of people come out and say like why didn't he get jail he should have get, gotten jail or some other people say like no he shouldn't have gotten jail and then you ask him like well, do you know what the standards are for somebody getting in jail or not getting jail? Like, is this normal for this type of behavior for somebody to get jail? Like, they have no idea. Uh, and they're like, just by, based on their own emotional reaction of being for or against the person, they're like, I hate this guy so much. So why didn't he get jail? So he must, there must be something wrong with the system that he didn't get in jail, right? So I was going to say, like, I can't comment on the fact that why he didn't go to jail because I don't know what the standards are. I don't know how much punishment you get for what level of crime in, in the United States. So, and if so, so many people commenting on that, I probably don't know either, but Rivka is, has so much nuanced information about this. So I'm so grateful that uh, she added all the commentary that I wasn't able to, like, I wasn't able to. This I is why no Rivka's idea. the best. She continues yeah. <laughs> yes. to demonstrate why we yes. keep her around. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm earning, earning, my her, keep, earning her earning spot my on the panel. <laughs> Rabbit is saying, I agree with Rivka. He probably plea bargained this down from simply 
for, for simply practical reasons. Uh, yeah, and as Rivka mentioned, the other side wanted this as well because it would be... Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our Blasphemy that we continue to send you more Blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.